Welcome back to another great gadget video. If you're into metal detecting or would like to locate rebar in concrete walls before drilling, then this video is definitely for you. The device you see right here is a metal detecting pinpointer, very similar to a Garrett Pro Pinpointer AT or White's TRX. The Garrett and White's pinpointers are both excellent, but they're also both very pricey. This pinpointer here is extremely sensitive, has many similar features, and the best part, it's only one quarter the cost. As usual, a link has been placed in the video description area, along with a money-saving coupon code, if you decide to purchase this pinpointer after watching this video. A very small percentage of the sale will go to me to help fund new videos on my channel. Okay, let's take a closer look at this pinpointer. Now the Garrett Pro Pinpointer AT is roughly 9 inches long from the end to the cap. The whites is roughly 10 inches long and this one here measures right around 10 and 3 quarter inches. Diameter of this pinpointer at the wide end is around an inch and 5 eighths and at this end it's elliptical shaped so on the flatter sides it's around 3 eighths of an inch across and from top to bottom, maybe 11 sixteenths to 3 quarters of an inch. The housing for this pinpointer is made out of a very durable plastic, just like the Garrett pinpointer and the White's pinpointer. The Garrett's, the White's, and this pinpointer here all use a 9 volt battery. To access it, I'll show you in a minute. You unscrew this cap, the 9 volt battery slides out with an O ring on the cap, and you slide the battery back in and tighten down securely. Just like Garrett's Pro Pointer AT and the White's TRX, sensitivity of the unit is very good. With this unit, you have a light right here, an LED that shines straight down on the target area at night when you're digging. You have a visual indication of proximity to the object being detected. So the further away you are, you're going to have only one LED light up when it detects it. You get closer and closer to the tip or to the sides and you're going to see it increase. Not only do you have a visual indication, the unit also vibrates in your hand and you also have an audible indication right over here. These features are all very similar to the Garrett and the Whites. Now the Garrett Pro Pinpointer AT allows for detection of objects not only off the tip but also off the sides all the way up high like this one from here down. So if you're in a hole looking for a target and you're not directly over it, it'll let you find it faster by left and right movements. When you find it, you slowly lift up and when it gets lower and lower on this scale, you know you're moving away from the top of that object. With the White's Pinpointer, there's no side detection. It's all done from the tip. This unit only has one sensitivity setting. It's extremely sensitive. The other units have multiple sensitivity settings and to me it's really not necessary. Just give me one good sensitivity setting and I'm very satisfied. This unit here is an IP66 rated unit which means it's water resistant up to several feet away. You can blast this with a hose, you can have it rained on and it will not damage the unit. The Garrett's and the White's are IP68 and what IP68 rating means is that the unit is waterproof. Now IP68 means that the device is able to be submerged in at least one meter of water, that's the minimum, usually a meter and a half, which is around five feet, or more for up to 30 minutes, and water cannot enter that unit or should not enter that unit. Many cell phones are rated IP68. If something's rated IP67 waterproof, that means it's allowed to go up to one meter deep, 3.3 feet of water for up to 30 minutes and water should not enter the unit. So this one's water resistant as is when you get it from the factory and the other two are waterproof. Now I'm going to show you what I did to this unit to make it IP67 or IP68 to make it waterproof so you can use this underwater and have no problems at all just like the other units. What I ended up doing is I wanted to see where water pressure would find its way into this device. So what I did is I removed the end cap with the O-ring. You'll see that momentarily. 
and I apply pressure over this LED opening. This is all nicely sealed all the way around, so there's no concern about water entering the two halves that are bonded together. So I checked around the LEDs, the push button, this opening here, all right, you can see it's closed right now because I sealed it, and around the LED. There's also a seal that goes around this whole panel, all right? And I checked all that as well. When I applied pressure over the LED right here, I did not notice any leaking. I checked this entire seal, didn't notice any leaking. But when I applied pressure over these LEDs, leaking was detected on all three. Going into this cavity here where the alarm is, the cap off, you can also hear the hissing between these two openings and the end cap. That tells me that these three LEDs and this opening here, water would easily enter under pressure causing damage to the components inside this unit. I checked around this button and there was no leakage detected around that button. So what I did is I took silicone glue right here, cut the tip at a very sharp angle, and I placed it over the areas that I wanted to seal, like over this LED, pushed inside that opening, and I made sure when I squeezed it was well seated so I can inject the silicone into and around that LED, forcing it inside the housing. Even though this one didn't show there was any leakage, I still wanted to seal it. I also took the silicone and I went along this whole seam, forcing it in around that entire panel, around the whole perimeter, then at the end, smoothing it with a wet finger to make it nice and neat. You can see this was all sealed, but it does not look like a sloppy job that you can tell that it was sealed. When the tip is cut, make sure it's big enough to be placed over each one of the LEDs. You're going to force it over that opening in the center, hold it there tight, and you're going to squeeze. The silicone is going to inject around each one of these LEDs. When you're done, take your finger, smooth it out nicely. Take a paper towel, wipe your finger, smooth it again fairly quickly. Don't wait too long. It'll smear and look ugly instead of looking nice and neat like you see right here. The red button you can leave alone, no reason to touch it. Over here, this is extremely loud when the detection takes place, but there's really no reason to have it open because when you close it, it's still fairly loud that you can hear it. So I took black silicone adhesive, injected it into the holes only about an eighth of an inch, and then smoothed it out and allowed everything to cure for 24 hours. Once that was done, I retested and there was no more pressure leaking through any of these openings inside the unit. After I show you some tests with objects for the sensitivity, I'm going to submerge this in a swimming pool five feet deep for 30 minutes. Then we're going to open up the end, and I'm going to show you the inside is completely dry. When an object is first detected, this LED right here is going to come on first. The closer you get, it's going to light more and more until it gets to the end. You're also going to hear the audible sound increase, get faster and faster, the closer that you get to the tip. And the same applies for the vibration in your hand. That's also going to change in relation to the distance of the object being detected. Let me open this up now and show you this end. Oh, one other thing to note. The other units have a hole drilled right over here. You can add one, very simple. Take an eighth inch drill bit, come in like this, go straight down. Drill it, put a little stainless key ring and a lanyard, and you'll have the same lanyard if you desire to have one. Unscrew the cap. See the O-ring seal? You want to make sure you apply some silicone grease on here. There's the battery right here, 9 volt. Slides right inside the unit. And Once it makes contact, just snug it down, and you're good to go. Now before I get started testing various metal objects, I just wanted to show you that the pinpointer also includes this very nice canvas holder, slides over the pinpointer all the way to the top, and you can secure it to a belt using Velcro or this button snap. For many years, I used my White's Bullseye 2 pinpointer works extremely well, it's very sensitive, and there's detection on all sides, unlike the White's TRX, 
the TRX only detects off the tip. Throughout the testing, I'll do some comparisons to this unit here as well. Power up the unit, push the button once, automatically sets the balance. You can see all the LEDs flashed. This is always on as long as the power is turned on. Let me place a ruler behind this so we can get an idea of how far the detection range will be. And I watched other videos on YouTube showing testing of the Garrett Pinpointer AT as well as the White's TRX. So I know roughly what kind of a detection range each one of those units has. And I can tell you it is very similar to the unit you see right here. Now the first test is going to be a penny. This is a zinc penny, copper on top or clad. Right around two inches away. And just like a metal detector search coil, when the target is this way, it has a very small profile, making the detection distance much shorter or much closer. And over here, it makes the detection distance much further away, much larger profile. So here you can see around two inches. Put it at an angle like that. Around an inch and an eighth. And if you go really flat, it's going to have to get very close. About a quarter of an inch. Right there, it's grabbing it. Now let's compare that to this white's just to see how that one acts. Okay. Make sure this is on the most sensitive setting. Okay, try it again. about an inch and a quarter on end. That one does much better on end. About five-eighths of an inch. So better one way and not better the other. Now I'm going to try a pull tab. Over two inches and on edge Similar to the penny, it needs to be very close. Now let's try the sides. Keep in mind, detection range is between here and the tip. Let's go sideways. And a little further than the tip. Yep, about three eighths from my angle. Okay, try a dime. Dime is about one and seven eighths, and of course on edge, mm, better. Yep, about three eighths to a half. Let's try it with the whites. Definitely much closer on the tip detection. Yep, it doesn't do as well on the flat side, but it definitely does better on the end. Okay, put that one back on. Now this coin here I found in a cemetery in the Bahamas. It's from the 1890s. Whoop, and it's a half penny or a half pence. 1890s. Getting it way out there. About two and three quarters. And about that far. Let's try here. Very good detection distance. Here's a buffalo nickel, just for the hell of it. Give it a try.
Now we're going to try a silver dime. Here we go. I think it's one and three quarters. Let's try it this way. Yep, one and three quarters. And a little closer on the sides. Detection ends there. Silver much further away on side detection. So if you're looking for silver coins, you should do just fine. Yep, it's about three eighths of an inch, seven sixteenths. Compare that to the whites one that I have here. It's only about an inch and a quarter. Very similar detection on edge. Okay, let's put this back on. Let's try my school ring that's made out of gold. Here we go. Wow, way away. Let's move this over, it's so far away. 10 carat. That's like two and three quarter inches. Very far. Put the thinner edge that way. Still pretty far away. A couple of inches away. Let's try US quarter on edge. Yeah, about seven sixteenths, half inch, and full face. two inches roughly and a little closer on the sides better distance on edge from the sides when the battery gets low on this unit you'll see this start to flash the LED indicating you should change the battery soon now a few items I found at the beach right here silver ring pretty far this way Okay. Let's try the whites. And that is with a fully charged battery. Highest sensitivity. So you can see the other one performs better than the $60, $70 whites. Okay, let's try another one. Turn it on. Right here is a tungsten ring I found at the beach. Very well. Here's a very thin silver ring I found at the beach with a stone. Looks like onyx. Let's see, it's got like this on edge. Right, you see, it grabs that with no problem. A friend of mine had a 14 carat ring just like this, thin, and it grabbed it right around there. So it'll grab that with no problem. And very tiny gold earrings, it's going to be very close to the tip in order to detect it, but it will detect it if it's close enough. Here's another ring I found at the beach. Silver, friendship ring it looks like. No problem grabbing that one. Here's a silver skateboard that I found. And you can see my battery's getting a little weak. It's been in there for a while using it. Now let's take a look at a button cell, a very tiny button cell. Let's see how well it detects this. About three-eighths of an inch away. Whoop. 
just to show you the sensitivity. Now hold this one on edge. Try it. Mm -hmm. Maybe around 3 eighths, 5 sixteenths. Compare that to the whites in a minute. Here's a really tiny piece of aluminum foil. And you can see it does absolutely nothing with very thin foil, no matter where you put it. Let's compare it to the whites. A little closer, maybe three quarters of an inch. And a little better. So the whites pick this up a little bit better than the other one. And I think the whites will actually grab this piece of foil. Yep, you gotta get pretty close, but it does grab it. Unlike this one here, in a way that's probably a good thing. You don't want to be picking up foil when you're looking for other objects. And my watch. It's about three inches. Hmm, much closer here. Yeah, the whites is not doing as well further away with the watch. And that's stainless steel. As you just saw by the testing, the detection of all the coins and the jewelry was extremely well, especially considering this is only around $35. Okay, I'm now going to submerge this in five feet of water right here leave it underwater for 30 minutes, come back and we're going to take a look at it to make sure it's still okay. Okay, 30 minutes has passed. I'm going to raise this out of the water and we're going to take a look at it to see if water found its way into the unit. Let's take a look. Let me just wipe it against my shirt first. Shake all the water off of it. Alright, wipe it. Let's open the end cap. Make sure no water comes out. Here's the battery. No water, power it up. And as you can see, it still works perfectly. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.